Hi guys, so today I have a couple new items that Dime Press has brought to HSN. Um, we had discussed a couple of these things before, but today I will try them out. So these items were sent free of charge from my review, and of course all opinions are my own. And any links on the description box will be affiliate links, which means I'll make a small commission if you're purchased items to those links. So I have this paper uh, pack, it's the plaids, dots, and stripes, and I thought it would go really well with the stamp kit called Sports because there are lots of colors on here. I think it's going to be really fun. I mean, maybe some of these go with, you know, your school colors or whatever it is that you're trying to match them up with or uh, sport teams, you know, kind of thing. So, again, there are 60 sheets in here. They are 8.5 by 11 inches. Uh, they're double-sided. And, um, yes, yeah, so you can see there's 12, 24 different designs, five sheets each of 12 different double-sided papers, right? So, this is the first... Uh, set here so we have this really cool pink and yellow um, plaid I suppose and on the back side it has a kind of more muted yellow stripe almost a golden yellow I mean, is it like mazy kind of color I don't know if those are different things but that's how I'm seeing it and here we have this gorgeous plaid really fun with the teal and the bright pink on that white background and look at this dot oh how cute is that nice fuchsia bright um, and then this one here is um, kind of like a soft purple. I think almost like a browny gray. Doesn't really look black to me, but maybe on the camera it's reading black. I don't know. With like a softer red plaid there. And on the back it has that white background with a larger purple dot. And again, these are, I would say, are about 85 pound, right around there. Much heavier than layering weight or like, you know, printer paper type things, but. Um, you know, I would say around 85 pounds. Um, this one in white background with the gray and blue and green plaid and this other side, again, very sport-like. Isn't Doesn't that look like something football-y? It does to me. <laughs> football-y, that's how we do it around here. Uh, this one, the purple with the black and white plaid. I love that for like Halloween. In the oh background, goodness. and um, on the back side it has white paper with uh, the different colors of dots that all coordinate back to this paper pack. Really cute. Loving this for just spring, honestly, flowers and things like that. I think it would be really pretty. I love that black and white, and then, you know, obviously Halloween thefts, things like that. On this side, we have a stripe that is really, really fun. And can you imagine putting, like, a little Frankenstein something on here? I don't know why these are giving me Halloween vibes on those. Really pretty. Uh, green and white plaid here. And on the other side, you have um, a stripe going in the horizontal direction there. Really cute and fresh pops of color. And then we have this pink plaid that looks like a shirt I would wear <laughs> with a little checker. Oh my gosh, the camera's like, ah! Yeah, it's, it's a smaller uh, grid, so it just has a different uh, feel there. And on the back it's white with like a fuchsia stripe, diagonal stripe. Yellow papers here with little pink and um, black kind of running through it. or. Oh, see, the camera is... <laughs> sorry, guys, if it wasn't focusing. And on the back side, we have a stripe. Very uh, beach chair looking to me. Very pretty. And then we have this plaid. Hopefully the camera will focus. Okay. And it's like, uh, again, pinkies and red colors with that black plaid there. Ooh, I love the black and white stripe. And then here, another nice plaid with uh, very springy colors with the green and the light blue and the light lavender color. And then a purple, a purple, <laughs> a green and white diagonal stripe. And this is the last set here. So really fun plaids. Um, with, again, it, it does read more black on this one with the pinky red purple. And red with white dots. Fresh, fresh. I love it. And then we have this guy. Now this guy is just all the stamps. <laughs> For all the sports, basically. Um, okay, so we have a letter set here. And the sizing on those guys is about one inch tall, I would say. And then we have the numbers, and um, yeah. So we have that there. I'll, actually, let's look at this first. So this is their inspo sheet, or at least it's giving you what the images look like here. Mega sport stamp kit. So we have I get a kick out of you. You have like a little um, cone that is so cute. Um, a trophy and so this is the soccer one obviously so you can see kind of the images there for basketball we have swish basketball slam dunk all the little images nothing but net dribble tennis has a ball and then you can do a background that makes it look like it maybe got hit or something hey we're the perfect match how cute is that hey ace the little tennis rackets uh baseball all the typical baseball things hey better better swing that is so cute uh lacrosse you guys stick with it rip I'm not familiar with lacrosse, but 
There you go. Check yourself or I'll do it for you. <laughs> That's pretty funny. Okay, so let's go ahead on the other side. Football. All the different things. I love this little dagger. I think that is so fun. Um, I love you as much as you love football. Volleyball. You have all the different things there. Bump, set, spike with the net and everything. Golf. You know, you are perfect. Oh. Okay. <laughs> Hope your day is terrific. And the clubs and like little um, flags, all that kind of stuff. Uh, track. I mean, really, track. Like, honestly, I think they even have pickleball in here. And I was like, what? So, I mean, this is really, I mean, all encompassing softball. Ain't nothing soft about it. And the girl runs on seams and dreams. Aw, or this girl runs on seams and dreams. That's so cute. Hockey. Skate sticks and wicked hat tricks. That's what hockey is made of. And here, uh, <laughs> we got this one here that is so funny. Um, okay, on the back side, we have bowling, all the different things that have to do with that. And I guess a turkey that uh, I might have heard of that. It's to make fun of people, isn't it? <laughs> Like, as far as you missed, maybe, or something? I don't know. I don't know. Uh, you're incredible. You're adorable. It's fair. Uh, pickleball. There you go. King, queen and king of pickleball. And uh, pickleball is my therapy. The little, um, I think they call it rackets? Paddles, probably, huh? Sentiments won. Game on. Fans. These are more, you know, kind of for everything. Game day. MVP. Go fight win. Sentiments two is the little pennant. And then, oh my gosh, and then the words that you can pop in there. Stamp them in there. I love that. Way to go. Legend. You're a catch. You have the little hands with the little, um, like, fake... What are these called? I don't know what they're called. But those little foam-like fingers are so cute. Um, and then the alphabet and numbers. So, you have those, and then again, uh, like the, the actual stamps, and they are a good size. I'm not going to be able to measure every single one, because that would take a long time, but I mean, these are sizable. Um, I don't have the smallest hands in the world, but hopefully you can kind of tell by that. Um, I love that image. That is so cool. They're so cute. Oh my gosh. Adorable. And again, you have your pennant, and then the stamping. Uh, and I mean, look how nice and sizable all these things are. at the little character there. So, what I'm going to do is grab a card base. Again, more of the generic kind of helping to flesh out sentiments, things like that. <laughs> this bowling wood is so cute. Uh, um, <laughs> pickleball. Adorable. Golfing. So yeah, I'll be back with a card base and I'll probably cut down some of the paper just to get started. And then we'll go from there. You know, with soccer you have the little boy and a girl here. I love the track one. That is so cute. Honestly, I love the little, um, like, uh, silhouettes. Soulmates. Aww. And the shoesies. <laughs> Alright, guys. I will... I'm just trying to show you a quick something of each one of these guys. Be right back. Softball. So cute. Okay, so to get started, I have a black card base here. I think that's really fun. I like the way the black makes it pop. And I think I'm going to do a soccer theme. And to me, I'm just thinking green. But of course, if you have a certain colorway for your team, your kids team, whoever it is that you're supporting and sending some card like this to or a project like this to. So I'm just going with the green plaid for now. And I, so this is a standard A2 size card. It was actually was a five by seven card that I haven't used. So I just cut it down to four and a quarter by five and a half. But if you're making your own, you would definitely want your paper to be eight and a half by five and a half scored at four and a quarter so you can have an ace two size card and this is a piece of that plaid paper again just cut down to uh, four and an eighth by five and three eighths and I always just eyeball that so you know on my guillotine so I'm close to it if <laughs> hopefully right on uh, some people like bigger easier numbers so like four by five and a quarter would mat in there or just frame out the whole thing four and a quarter five and a half whatever you like to do. So we have that black pop in the background. I brought out this white paper. Now this is alcohol ink marker type of paper, but I might do something different as far as um, uh, coloring it in. Maybe I'll use some watercolor or like water uh, based markers. So uh, what I was thinking about is putting that I get a kick out of you and then also stamping our little gal there. I just don't really know how big this is going to be once I do that. Oh, that's great. Okay, so I kind of want it to obviously to mat into this in a nice way. So I think something like this. And then I was debating, do I want that black? I know I'm going to pop her in there in black and then color it in a little bit. But you know what? Maybe some gold? Something different? I was thinking about green. I don't know that I have a green pigment ink that will hold on to um, uh, embossing powder. So. I will just go like this. So let's do it with gold. So we'll have a little accent of gold. 
So, let me get this set up on a uh, precision stamping press and I'll grab it. I get a kick out of you. I pretty much lined up in the corner. That way all I have to do is cut this other spot when I'm ready. <laughs> a little gal here. Oh, let's not forget this, which I normally do forget because I'm going to use um, a gold pigment ink, but I'm also going to use gold powder to really make it gold. Otherwise, you can just put some clear embossing powder over any color that you have. Pigment inks are best or, you know, like versifying. I wouldn't say versifying is pigment ink. I don't know what Oh, I guess it is. <laughs> no wonder. That's why it stays wet for so long. I almost feel like that's oil-based, but um, anyway. Uh, it just stays wet longer, so you can use the embossing powder. So once your ink starts drying, the embossing powder is not going to stick to it. So pigment ink just gives you that time to play with it. And a hybrid ink might, too. A hybrid ink. I just haven't tried that, to be honest. Okay. So let's use some gold embossing powder. I'm going to come back to this in a minute because we want to stamp our character on there, too. But for now, again, it doesn't have to be perfect. It'll hold on. I'm trying to get a little scrap here. Oopsie. Sorry. Oh, I hit my lighting. Hopefully it didn't change too much. And let's get that going. Or, again, pigment inks and um, pigment inks. Um, embossing powders in different colors, right? Which I have a ton from, like, the, the 90s or <laughs> whatever. Um... Didn't do the best job right here, so what I'm going to do is just take a second with a little brush. I usually have some kind of brush around here. Anyway, I'll just grab something that's very fine, and I'm just going to get in here and clean this up just a little bit, get that out of the way, and then heat set this, okay? And I'll be right back. I'm loving it. Okay, so I'm going to pour this back into here, then uh, set this back up, and so I'll be right back. Ready, and we'll just put our little gal. And I mean, you know, you can nestle her in if you want to bring it down like here, and then you'd have... Um, a nice uh, topper bit. I, <laughs> what I want to do is measure this. Her hand is all the way out to here, like at three and a half inches, if I was right at the hand. Um, three and a half inches, four and a quarter. Yeah, that's okay. Uh, let me see the other way. So that means we want to take at least three quarter inches off in the other direction if we're going to... Again, you can mat obviously, whatever shape you like. I don't know. I always like to keep it incre incremental. So we're at five and a half here. Yeah, I would say, f well, we'll see. I think I'm just going to make this one up. <laughs> so there we go, because it is a little bit shorter than five. So, I mean, I can bring it up, too. So that's the other. Oh, maybe we should do that. Uh, yeah, okay, right there. All right. And let's get this guy here. And I'm going to stamp this in VersaFine. Again, pigment ink, as we just learned, and um, or at least I did. <laughs> and then I'll cover that with clear embossing powder and heat set that. And then we're going to just color it in. And so let's get this guy going. And these are acrylic stamps, so just for even pressure, you don't want to press too, too hard. Missed her little legs there, and hopefully... Yeah, one more. So whenever you heat emboss, you see my paper got a little wonky, and I was hoping whenever I went to restamp that it wouldn't like shift on me. But I think it looks good. Okay. So again, I'm going to top this with some clear embossing powder and just heat set it. And I'll bear okay, back. And there it is. You might wonder why I just didn't put clear on this and clear on this, but you saw when I stamped with the gold, it wasn't like the brightest gold. It was kind of dull a little bit. So if I just top that with clear embossing powder, it is going to look nicer, but it's not going to look as like opaque as gold on gold. Um, you could do black on black, right? I do have black embossing powder, but for this application, I knew the clear would be just fine. And I was just real careful because I already heat set this to kind of direct my heat over here. And... She came out perfectly. So I'm going to put this back in here and we will get to coloring. This is going to be really quick and easy. You know, that's what I like. So I have a water brush here. It's one size that I always use. I don't even know what size this is. Just not too big and not too small. And that's about it. And I'm just going to grab some um, water-based markers I have in front of me. You know, yesterday we went to my son's orientation kind of at the high school because he'll be a freshman next year. And I've already been through this with Diego, my oldest son, but still I'm like... <gasps> This time around, I feel like, I, I don't know, I guess because it's my last son. <laughs> then we're we'll away from Miranda to get that. But um, their colors are like, I would say maroon and gold, which is really nice. So I'm just going to put that on this little gal here. So um, this is like a nice maroony color, I think. And then I'll grab something that looks golden and yellow like this. And I'll just pick up some color and 
you know, I don't know. Um, hmm. Let's say this part is that maroon color. And then let's say the shorts are. I don't really know because it's a new school. So either way, I usually start where I think I have shadow and then I bring the color down into the other areas just to um, make some fake shading basically, right? And if I need a little more, I'll grab a little more. And that's all I'm gonna do. Just add a little color and blend that in. I already did this part. And literally I'm just wiping it on my hand, but of course I can wipe it on like a little paper towel. Let me get some of this golden color down, and hopefully it's gold enough. Also, a lot of times with these guys, you can also just bring them in and then pull the color out. The only thing is this is not watercolor paper, so it's harder to get the color moving if you're not using specifically something meant for that. Sometimes Bristol papers, you can still get the color moving. But I'm just going to color it all in, and her hair and all that, and I will be back. This literally has taken like seconds. Let's just bring in some green for this grass. And I mean, that's how I do it, you know. <laughs> You all know me, I'm just a little, little something here. Green's a little more forest color, but that's okay. All right, and I mean, if you wanted to add some blue around her or something, you can definitely do that. Um, let's see, we wanna be a little more artsy about it. Maybe this one might be a little bit too light, but we'll see. Just a little something, right? Yeah, it looks good. Okay, well then I'm gonna take a second to do that and I'll be right back, just adding a little blue around her. So I am just going to let that um, dry just a little bit and then I'm gonna just take it to my guillotine and again, uh, trim it down. So um, to something that I would like to matte layer onto a card this size and I'll let you know what that number is when I come back. I'll be right back. You guys, you know we made like some measurements at the beginning. I was like, well, her hand's kind of like out here at three and a half and that would be three quarter inches smaller than four and a quarter. I wasn't sure if the five and a half was going to work for me, but honestly, when I brought it over here, like that was the best. Um, so on the five and a half side, if I want to take three quarters off, that would be four and three quarters. And I mean, we are right there. And I think that looks really great. Look at that. See, it's a little bit different this time because again, we're eyeballing it. <laughs> um, but when I come this way, I do have it right now, right up to the image, you know, is about three and five eighths. So I can take a little bit off of this other side. So it was it nice and straight anyway. And I can bring it into the uh, three and a half that I need, right? And so that will be my topper piece still matte layering into um, a standard two size in, in a more standard way. Now I am going to also cut a black piece of paper I think to make this pop just like we have black in the background here. So I'm just going to cut a piece just a little bit bigger than this. Again we said um, three and a half, see, it looks kind of funky right now. Three and a half by five, four and three quarters. So I'll do four and seven eighths by three and five eighths. I'll be right back. So I'm just gonna stick these two together and then we're just gonna pop it onto our card base. Now again, you can pop this up too if you want more dimension, um, but I think I'm just gonna stick it down and then stick it down. So I'm gonna get this on here and I'll be back and we'll place it on our card base. So I just, um, you know, and I show sometimes uh, my little tricks here as far as keeping things flat, especially since we did the heat embossing twice and then, you know, all that kind of stuff. We want this stuck down. I'll just get like something heavy. This is just a platform for one of my machines and maybe put the marquee on top or put one of my other machines on top, something else, and then just leave it there for, you know, five minutes or so. And that really helps flatten it out. So that's stuck down all around. And look at that. So that so cute and I'm just gonna glue that down again if you want to put some dimensionals you can definitely do that punch it up with some pearls or some rhinestones or some um, drops you know um, puff drops like from little squeezy bottles um, <laughs> all kinds of different ways to add a little something else if you would like how cute is that so I'm just eyeballing that guy and there we are so thanks for watching guys you know what's so funny I like the way this is at the bottom it looks kind of like grass like at the very base but anyhow um there we go that's my card thank you so much dime press for sending these items for review thanks for watching guys hopefully that gives you an idea again i'm not an artist not even close i just get a little color and i always start wherever i think it's going to be darkest and then just bring the color down and i mean that was super quick she looks so cute i just i love it so thanks uh for watching guys i'll have images coming up i'll have the links in the description box and i will see you all at the next one bye now